Uh, professor Franco Cardini is a professor emeritus of uh, medieval history at the Institute of Humanities and Social Sciences at the Scuola Normale di Pisa. He has taught at the universities of Bari, Florence. He has taught at Millbury College. He has taught at the Ecole des Hautes Etudes de Sciences Sociales in Paris, in uh, Paris 8 at Vincennes, at Saint Denis, and many others. He's a fellow of the Feb Berenson Foundation at the Villa Itatti, connected, as we know, with Harvard University. And uh, we are very honored to have him with us today to talk about political and cultural changes as an effect of the pestilences and pandemics through the centuries, an exhibition of case studies. Professor Cardini. We listen. Yes, wonderful. So <laughs> I I had a little technical problem. I I have always technical problems. Uh, so good uh, afternoon. My wishes to Professor Urso for because of uh, his voice. And uh, uh, so I share I share because uh, my paper is uh, quite. Uh, Mm, it's quite uh, not too short, so, so I I can begin. Thank you. Recent pandemic events have recalled the relevance of epidemic phenomena, their genesis, their immediate and distant consequences. In the so-called medieval centuries, the plague of Yersinia pestis was, together with uh, leprosy, for instance, the most widespread epidemic disease with the most extensive social outcomes. Leaving uh, to the written test, the, the examination of uh, other diseases that are both endemic and epidemic, such as leprosy, I will focus on the social, economic, and cultural consequences of the plague pandemic that struck Europe between 3047 uh, and 3051, more or less, then came back in many waves through the late Middle Ages and the modern times. Uh, we shall arrive to uh, 725, more or less. The contagion arrived in Europe through Italian and Provencal ports during 1347. It was brought by Genoese ships from Crimea. The rats invested the ship stores loaded with grain, with the fleas, carriers of the bacterium known today as uh, Yersinia pestis, or you, if you prefer uh, paste, Pastorella pestis. Even if some scholars tend to think that the plague could have reached Eastern, Eastern and Central Europe by land as well. The death rate was a frightening dimensions. It is estimated that, that the po population of Western Europe was about 80 million people at the beginning of the contagion, middle of the uh, 14th century. According to the most uh, reliable calculation, uh, the, disease, the disease killed 20, 25 millions between 3047 and 3050. However, in certain areas, it killed between 40 and 60 percent of the inhabitants. It is estimated that Hamburg, for instance, lost 66% uh, of its population, Barcelona, 60%. At the end of this century, 
after other waves of the epidemic, it seems that the Europeans were further reduced to around 45 million. In England, the population before 3048 amounted to almost, almost 4 million. In the aftermath of the Black Death, it still exceeded 3 million. But by uh, for 430, it had fallen to just over 2 million and would not rise to the levels of the years before the outbreak of the epidemic until the 17th century. Italy, whose population was estimated at around 11 million at the end of the 13th century, in the years of Dante, the peak, uh, this was the peak of its uh, golden age, was at uh, the time the most urbanized area in Europe, with more than 150 centers of five, 5,000 or more inhabitants, but 11 centers, ur urban centers above 40,000, which is uh, a good number, and was home to the largest cities of the continent, with the exception of Paris. Of these, dozens, dozens lost half on, of their inhabitants, some two-thirds. There, uh, there was nothing that current medicine could do. From the great, uh, the great doctors of antiquity, Hippocrates uh, and Galenus, the Middle Ages uh, had received the basic teaching, then variously elaborated according to which art consisted basically in maintaining a harmonious balance between the humor secreted by the human body and diseases occurred when this relationship was altered by defect or excess of one or more of them in relation also to environment and seasonal situation and therefore to the four qualities, the fundamental qualities uh, uh, of uh, uh, Aristotelical uh, system, dry, wet, hot, and cold. This is a complex and delicate network of balances which determined the interaction of the human beings and his body with the surrounding environment and the astronomical arrangement of the sky could be altered by an infinite series of causes. The great uh, doctor of the papal court uh, of Avignon, Guy de Choyac, attributed the extraordinary humidity of the spring air in 3048, which was said to be one of the main cases of the spread of the plague to the magna coniuncio, we are speaking about astrology, astronomy and astrology, to the magna coniuncio of Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn in the constellation of Aquarius in March 3045. Aquarius uh, was uh, terrible. Uh, at an uh, astronomical level. The phases related to the contagion were many. Beside the astrological explanation, it was important and widespread, the meteoric one, which attributed the responsibility of the spreading of the disease to the winds. 
responsible for the hot and rainy climate, or the explanation of the corruption, corruption of the air, another important explanation, corruption of the air, supported, for example, by Pietro Curialti from Tossignano, another great uh, doctor, with his theory of pneuma spirit circulating in the environment by also in human beings in the form of breathing. That the breath of the plague was a pestiferous breath. It is, uh, was also the opinion of the famous uh, Florentine doctor Tommaso del Garbo. The Tommaso del Garbo, del Garbo was the imsina of uh, uh, Florence in the time of Dante. These uh, writings, together with uh, the numerous uh, regimina contra pestilentiam, which took up uh, the hygienic and dietary literature of the regimina sanitatis, gave rise uh, between the 14th and 15th century to a vast literature on the plague, which included a uh, uh, famous doctor, uh, doctor physician, uh, as, uh, for instance, Michele Savonarola, the father of uh, Gerolamo Savonarola, and uh, the great uh, mm, Medici, Medici's uh, uh, philosopher, Marsilio Ficino, among its authors. The Concilia insti insisted not so much on therapy as on prevention, based on the correct uh, heating of the dwelling with a good wood fire, on ventilation and exposure to the sun in order to beat the deadly combination of heat and humidity, ablutions and messages with the substances such as, uh, for instance, vinegar and the rose water, a diet based on white bread and good meat, avoiding on, avoiding on Mm, vegetal food, rest, inner serenity and joy, abstention from coitus and distance from crowded place, purges and bloodlettings. If uh, medicine could not provide uh, either cures or reliable uh, explanation, the plague preceded by a long series of bad harvest, famine, wars, and climatic disorders of various kinds, of various kinds which uh, struck Europe at the beginning of the 14th century, dramatically renewed apocalyptic expectation and gave a strength to both obscure prophecies and uh, the onset of penitential movements and uh, riots. Also, the epidemic acted as a powerful disruptive factor of social orders and balance, creating the need for scapegoats. It was in 3049 that uh, Jean de Roctayade, or uh, Johannes de Rupeschissa, drew up uh, his Liber Secretorum Eventum, in which it was foreseen that within the next 20 years, the Antichrist would exercise his power for a period that would last three and a half years and would be preceded by catastrophes such as plagues, famine, earthquakes. The millennial reign would then begin in the first part of which 
until 1415, the Roman Empire would move to the Holy Land, thus opening the time for the government of peace and justice and under the sovereignty of the Holy Spirit. This is a prophecy, of course. On 25 January 1348, a strong earthquake shook a vast region in Europe, and many saw in it a premonitory sign of the plague. Among them, Francesco Petrarca and the German preacher Johannes of Winterthur, a Franciscan, a German Franciscan, who saw in it and in the spread of the contagion the terrible events indicated by the Gospels as preceding the second coming of Christ. He reported that in Germany people were waiting for the return of the Emperor Frederick II, who would punish the rich and the high clergy and restore the kingdom of justice as emperor of the last time. The text of a laude spread among the flagell flagellants spoke of the, the dissolution and the then rebirth of the religious apostolic communities. In Salzburg, the group of penitents called the flagellants spoke of a heavenly letter deposited in Jerusalem by an angel and containing a divine ultimatum by Christ, indignant of mankind's sins. The movement of the flagellants, which had already appeared several times since the second half of the 13th century, spread unstoppably in coincidence with the plague, undoubtedly contributing to its spread. It seems that the first procession were held in Styria in September 3048, coinciding with violent thunderstorms that devastated the harvest and ravaged the vineyards. From Austria and Hungary, the penitents traveled large part of the empire's territory, Poland, the Netherlands, Switzerland, and France. In the meantime, there were uh, numerous episodes uh, of uh, Jewish hunting. When the violence broke out, the papal courier intervened promptly in a bull of 26 September 3048, Pope Clement VI forbade any robbery, murder, or attempt at a violent conversion against the Jews, recalling all they themselves were victims of the epidemic. The Emperor Charles IV also pronounced the same. But their prohibition had uh, little success, at least in France, in France, in the Rhineland, in Northern Germany, in many parts of Switzerland, in Bohemia. Scenes of lynching and mass burning took place in all these areas, sometimes with the support of local authorities. Elsewhere, however, for example, in Vienna and in Regensburg, things were, went differently. And it seems that common sense of order prevailed. But sometimes, the Jewish communities had to pay dearly in, econo in, a, in economic terms 
for their precarious tranquility. The first sign of the deconstruction of human relations is perfectly illustrated in the first page of Boccaccio's Decameron. Said Boccaccio, charity was dead, hope was lost. The reaction to this general obnubilation of conscience combined with the idea of the plague as divine punishment and the urging of question concerning theodicy, theodicy, the justice of God, how could God have allowed all this? This, is, uh, this was the, the problem. Provoked also criticism against the highest, highest levels of society. The vibrant denouncement of the Petrarca's letters called sine nomine, without name, proves to what extent the discomfort deeply touched the, the church and the society. In the community of the Faithfuls, the voices of scandal were mounting dramatically against the corruption, almost of the high clergy, but also of nobility and so, and so on. The arrival of the plague and the worsening of the economic and social situation also led to riots. Between the second and the sixth decade of the 14th century, the French countryside was repeatedly run by crowds of so-called pastoraux, literally little shepherds who linked their tumultuous protest against the rich and feudal lords to the an anxiety of collective palingenesis inspired by the apocalypse and the, the idea of a new crusade that would, that would purify Christianity for its not only external, but also internal enemies. The confused Christian, Christian idea, idea of the election of the poor people made its way into this crowd. The poor and deserted were, in reality, the chosen people, chosen by God. These uh, themes were present in the revolt of the French peasants called Jacquerie, perhaps from the burlesque name Jacques, by which the peasants were referred to, which between 1356 and 1358 led to the burning of many castles and the killing of nobles. They were not absent even in the Parisian revolt of 1356, led by the provost, the, the, the chief of the merchant, Etienne Marcel, uh, a leader of merchant, uh, we can say. Apocalyptic, apocalyptic ideas of palingenesis animated also the revels of the so-called uh, chompi, is a strange Florentine words, that uh, between uh, 1351 and 1378 uh, upset Perugia, Siena, and Florence. The chompi, uh, a corruption petetra 
of the, of the word uh, companions, the, the friend in work, uh, if you want, the chompy were, uh, I'm saying, among the workers who contributed to the production of the woolen cloth, the, le the least specialized, therefore, those with the worst salary level and the lowest social consideration. Uh, lumpen proletariat, uh, in Marxian terms, uh, if you want. In Florence, even before the pandemic, one of them, Ciuto Brandini, an uh, old syndicalist, had uh, already tried to give a stronger voice to their demands. For this, he had been executed in 3045. But in 378, a broad insurrection forced the Florentine municipal government to listen to the chompi and even to give them a part in the decision-making power. The chompi not only demanded that the Arte della Lana, the, the uh, corporation, corporation of uh, wool, the corporation that brought uh, together the managers of the textile production cycle and the honor of the woolen cloth shows. Uh, this uh, corporation, the Chompi, wanted uh, that no longer had, should have the jurisdiction over them. They also wanted guarantees regarding the stability of the wage and above all, they demanded to be able to form a corporation. In short, they demanded freedom of association and the right to participate in the city government. Uh, something revolutionary, if you want. For uh, a four-year period between uh, 3078 and uh, 3082, these were accepted. Uh, there is uh, the four years uh, of uh, our Soviet government uh, in medieval Florence. Three new arts uh, were established, called the arts of the people of God. These were accepted, but later the oligarchy of the Florentine bankers and merchants took over and cancelled all of their social rights, also by physical violence. It should be noted that the religious inspiration was strong among the Chompi, not only because the religious language was perhaps the only one available to the illiterate people to assert their rights and link them to some legitimate reason, but also because among the Chompi, the preaching among the Chompi, the preaching also called Fraticelli, Little Friars, Little Friars, Franciscan rebels, Umberto Eco had said many things about, was alive. In fact, after the events of 3078, 3082, the Florentine government was much stricter in seeking out and condemning and condemning anyone suspected of unorthodox sympathies. Even stronger 
were the Christian apostolic instances in the English revolt in 3081, led by the commoner Watt Tyler and the itinerant preacher John Ball. There is uh, in this uh, uh, revolt, uh, uh, if you want, uh, the, the shadow of the philosophical ideas uh, by uh, the great uh, preacher and philosopher Wycliffe, also the master of uh, the Bohemian uh, Janus. This uh, revolt was uh, essentially dictated by tiredness due to heavy royal fiscalism, exacerbated by the continual need for money on the part of the English crown, which was engaged in the long war against France. Or better said, in the long war about the crown, the crown of France disputed between the King of France and the King of England. The Hundred Years War. Since alongside the taxes that had to be paid to the king, there were the burdens imposed by the lords of the land. The English situation had become unsustainable. However, it is a characteristic that during the rebellion, soon ferociously suffocated by the nobility, even Adamitic motives emerged. The chorus of the crowd spread among, among rebels said, when Adam delved and Diva span, what was then the gentleman? This uh, religious uh, sensibility imbued with fear, favored also by popular preachers, was also found in the literature and art of the time with its uh, triumph uh, of death, its uh, dance macabre, its encounter of the dead with the living, fearful themes, which show how deep the crisis was. The people of the 14th century felt, or at least showed, a fear of death and no in previous centuries. This is very, very, very important. And this without doubt, because in the years of the crisis, death was more dramatically present in society, of course, but also because in the meantime, people had learned to live better and to become more attached to existence. Modernity, modernity is beginning. Many of those uh, representations date back to years before the crisis of the 14th century. The encounter of the dead with the living, you know, in manuscripts from the 13th century. And the famous fresco in the Campo Santo in Pisa, with a depiction of the final judgment, formerly linked to the black, black death, is now certainly attributed to Buffalmaco and painted in 30, 36, 1341, before the plot. The inspiration came from the preaching in the near convent of Dominican friars. I'm sorry to have uh, no pictures uh, about uh, this uh, 
case, pictorial, uh, pictorial cases, but uh, they are very, very famous. This new devo devotional climate also preceded over the birth, especially in Italy and Flanders, of a different way of understanding the same mystical experience. The modern devotion in Latin, uh, devotio moderna, which had uh, representatives such as Bridget of Sweden, Catherine of Siena, Henry Suiz, Thomas of Kempis, and which was characterized by a less formal and more private, more intimate, more individual loyalty to religion perceived essentially as a human value. Some new cults were also born born or intensified, such as the one for San Sebastian, considered the protector against the plague, a form of a Christian Apollon. However, the long and powerful social, economic and spiritual favor that had upset European society in the 14th century and the aftermath of which would have tested for a long time did not fail to provoke a response from the ruling classes. It took the form of real economic and productive reorganization with the concentration of land assets in a smaller number of, hand, of hands. I am speaking about the 13th or 14th century. Also, after the great chain failures, failures of the 3040s, more or less, Bank, bank houses learned to keep themselves with a more flexible structure so that the failure of some branch would not lead to the collapse on the entire complex. We are, Max Weber had uh, explained very well uh, this uh, phenomenon, we are at the origin of uh, a new uh, modern uh, system, uh, the, uh, the system of uh, modern banks, uh, the holding. Moreover, the monopoly of textile production until the middle of the 14th century held by the Flemish tended to make a way for England Holland and Italy. In the meantime, industrial, industrial, um, industrial uh, activities were also widespread. Now, no longer located in the city, but in the countryside, where labor was more docile, more tier at the economical level. More, more expensive and the less organized. The problem of the overall evaluation of the age between the 14th and 15th century, which has been the subject of analysis since, uh, since the 19th century, therefore remains open. Over the course of time, two opposing schools of thought have emerged. One interprets the period as a long period of depression of the economy and society. The other argues instead that the shop 
falling population led to an overall improvement in the relationship between population and resources which had become unsustainable in the early 14th century. In short, the plague would have acted as a sort of a rebalancing factor. The effective coexistence between a great artistic development, such as, such as the humanistic Renaissance one, and the spread of the plague, with its tragic consequences, is seen by the proponents of the optimistic thesis as a proof of the general positivity of a period in question. On the contrary, those who read a wave of depression, and in particular, Roberto Sabatino Lopez, argued that the impossibility of investing capital productively in a time of crisis determined their holding in art through the financing of pictorial cycles and monumental works. Finally, it should be remembered that today a less uh, totalizing interpretive, uh, interpretive visions prevails, where the focus is not to provide all inclusive answers, but rather to examine local situation in order to understand in depth the mechanisms, the different mechanisms of function, functioning and reaction to the pandemic. I apologize myself for this horrible Florentine accent and uh, thank you for your attention. Grazie mille. Thank you, Professor Cardini, uh, for your interesting exposition. I do have questions, but I also want to remind all that uh, time for questions is reserved at the end where we hope to have a general discussion and communication. 